Welcome to the operator screen tutorial. When the ignition key is turned on or the computer is reset, the display will show an introduction screen with the version of software that is loaded into the computer. This is the main operator screen. This screen shows the application rate set point, the aggregate size, and the speed set point while standing still. When the chip spreader is powered down, the values displayed on the screen are saved and returned the next time power is turned on. The speed set point is displayed when the chip spreader is not moving. Once the chip spreader is in motion, the actual speed is displayed. The speed feedback is generated by a magnetic sensor mounted to the motor output shaft, which generates pulses which the computer displays as feet per minute. Different configurations of these three values can be saved in one of five memory presets. The memory presets store an application rate set point, an aggregate size, and a speed set point in one of the memory locations. The memory push buttons then restore the information stored in that location to the screen when activated. This allows the operator to switch between stored combinations with the push of a button as opposed to having to scroll individual values. It is important to understand that the memory functions simply restore the selected values to the operator screen. If one of the values is changed while operating, such as the speed set point, the speed will change. The value stored in the memory will not change. Pressing the memory push button will restore the saved values and override the change speed set point. To save information in a memory, adjust the application rate, aggregate size, and speed set point to values that will be commonly used together. When the values displayed on the screen are set to the desired values, press the save push button. Select the location or memory the information is to be stored in by pressing the corresponding memory push button. The display will return to the main operator screen. As a check, press the memory push button to ensure the information was saved. The display then shows the values saved in that memory. Press the CAL switch up or down to access the calibration screens. The first screen displayed is the right hopper calibration. According to the example used in the calibrating materials portion of this tutorial, the right hopper measured 18 pounds and the set point was 20 pounds, meaning the right hopper is 2 pounds light. Press and hold the CAL switch up until the pounds per square yard reads 2.0. The right cal value will decrease as the rate is increased and increase as the rate is decreased. The right cal value is a density factor that serves as a reference to keep track of the calibration. Press the save push button to store the calibration for the right hopper. This process will increase the output of the right hopper by 2 pounds, making the output equal to the application rate set point. The screen will reset to zero once the save push button is activated. Press the scroll switch down to access the calibration screen for the left hopper. In the calibrating materials portion of this tutorial, the left hopper weighed 23 and a half pounds at the application rate set point of 20 pounds per square yard. The measured weight is three and a half pounds heavy compared to the set point. Press and hold the cal switch down until the pounds per square yard reads minus 3.5. The left cal value will increase as the rate is decreased and decrease as the rate is increased. The left cal value is a density factor that serves as a reference to keep track of the calibration. 
Press the Save push button to store the calibration for the left hopper. This process will decrease the output of the left hopper by three and a half pounds, making the output equal to the application rate set point. The screen will reset to zero once the push button is activated. The calibration for the left and right hoppers is now complete. To exit the calibration screens, press the scroll switch up two times to return to the main operator screen. The calibration screens can be exited at any time by pressing the scroll switch without changing the calibration. The calibration is changed only by pressing the save push button. The calibration process may need to be repeated depending on the accuracy desired. To move to the next screen, press the scroll switch down. This screen shows how fast the conveyors are moving. The speed of the conveyors can be varied independently to provide a uniform distribution of material to the front hopper. With the percentage set to 99%, the conveyor will run at its highest speed. With the percentage set to 10%, the conveyor will run at its slowest speed. To change the speed of the conveyors, press the cal switch up or down. The screen will now show the set percentage of the left conveyor. Pressing the cal switch up will increase the left conveyor speed by 5%. Pressing the cal switch down will decrease the left conveyor speed by 5%. Pressing the scroll switch down will show the screen for changing the right conveyor speed. Pressing the cal switch up will increase the right conveyor speed by 5%. Pressing the cal switch down will decrease the right conveyor speed by 5%. Pressing the scroll switch up will show the screen for changing the left conveyor speed. Pressing the scroll switch up again will show the actual speed of both conveyors. The conveyor speed percentage can be changed at any time, whether or not the conveyors are moving. Adjusting the speed of the conveyors is particularly useful in doing shoulder work or in operations requiring less than full hopper width. It is also useful in trying to smooth out delivery of material to match the rate being spread. When properly adjusted, the conveyor should run approximately 80% of the time with the hopper at maximum width and the chip spreader traveling at maximum speed for the particular job. To move to the next screen, press the scroll switch down. This screen shows how fast the augers are moving. The speed of the augers can be varied independently to provide a uniform distribution of material in the front hopper. With the percentage set to 99%, the auger will run at its highest speed. With the percentage set to 10%, the auger will run at its slowest speed. To change the speed of the augers, press the cal switch up or down. This screen will now show the set percentage of the left auger. Pressing the cal switch up will increase the left auger speed by 5%. Pressing the cal switch down will decrease the left auger speed by 5%. Pressing the scroll switch down will show the screen for changing the right auger speed. Pressing the cal switch up will increase the auger speed by 5%. Pressing the cal switch down will decrease the right auger speed by 5%. Pressing the scroll switch up will show the screen for changing the left auger speed. Pressing the scroll switch up again will show the actual speed of both augers. The auger speed percentage can be changed at any time whether or not the augers are moving. To move to the next screen, press the scroll switch down. This screen shows the engine coolant temperature on the left, the engine oil pressure in the center, and the fuel remaining in the fuel tank on the right. To move to the next screen, press the scroll switch down. This screen shows the hydraulic oil temperature on the left, the engine RPM in the center, and the system voltage on the right side. The right side will display battery voltage when the ignition is on but the engine not running. Then voltage will increase to 13.5 to 15 volts as the output of the alternator supplies voltage to the system. 
To move to the next screen, press the scroll switch down. This screen shows the hours on the machine on the left side and the feet chipped on the right side. When the ignition key is turned on but the engine is not running, the hours will not accumulate because the hour meter is started and stopped by an oil pressure switch. If the engine is shut down after running less than six minutes, the hour meter will not increase as it counts up in six minute increments. Once the engine is started, the hours will start to accumulate. Feet chipped will accumulate as long as the gate thumb switch is active. Distance will not accumulate when traveling and not chipping. To reset to zero feet chipped, press the CAL switch up or down. You must push the scroll switch up to return to each previous screen, eventually returning to the top screen.